We have tackled many strange stories on 60 Minutes, but perhaps none like this. It's the story of the U.S. government's grudging acknowledgement of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, more commonly known as UFOs. After decades of public denial, the Pentagon now admits there's something out there, and the U.S. Senate wants to know what it is. The Intelligence Committee has ordered the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense to deliver a report on the mysterious sightings by next month. The story will continue in a moment. So what you're telling me is that UFOs, unidentified flying objects, are real. Bill, I think we're beyond that already. The government has already stated for the record that they're real. I'm not telling you that. The United States government is telling you that. Luis Elizondo spent 20 years running military intelligence operations worldwide in Afghanistan, the Middle East, and Guantanamo. He hadn't given UFOs a second thought until 2008. That's when he was asked to join something at the Pentagon called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP. The mission of ATIP was quite simple. It was to collect and analyze information involving anomalous uh, aerial vehicles, uh, what I guess in the vernacular you, you call them UFOs. We call them UAPs. You know how this sounds. It sounds nutty, wacky. Look, Bill, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that, that it doesn't sound wacky. What I'm telling you is real. The question is, what is it? What are its intentions? What are its capabilities? Buried away in the Pentagon, ATIP was part of a $22 million program sponsored by then-Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to investigate UFOs. When Elizondo took over in 2010, he focused on the national security implications of unidentified aerial phenomena documented by U.S. service members. Imagine a technology that can do six to 700 G-forces, that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space, and oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. That's precisely what we're seeing. Elizondo tells us ATIP was a loose-knit mix of scientists, electro-optical engineers, avionics and intelligence experts, often working part-time. They combed through data and records and analyzed videos like this. A Navy air crew struggles to lock on to a fast-moving object off the U.S. Atlantic coast in 2015. Recently released images may not convince UFO skeptics, but the Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is. Or this. Or this. So what do you say to the skeptics? It's refracted light. Uh, weather balloons a rocket being launched, v Venus. In some cases, there are, are simple explanations for what people are witnessing, but there are some that, that are not. We're not just simply jumping to a conclusion that's saying, oh, that's a UAP out there. We're going through our due diligence. Is it some sort of new type of cruise missile technology that China has developed? Is it some sort of high-altitude balloon that's conducting reconnaissance? Ultimately, when you have exhausted all those what-ifs, and you're still left with, with the fact that this is in our airspace and it's real, that's when it becomes compelling and that's when it becomes problematic. Former Navy pilot Lieutenant Ryan Graves calls whatever is out there a security risk. He told us his F-18 squadron began seeing UAPs hovering over restricted airspace southeast of Virginia Beach in 2014 when they updated their jet's radar making it possible to zero in with infrared targeting cameras. So you're seeing it both with the radar and with the infrared, and that tells you that there is something out there. Pretty hard to spoof that. These photographs were taken in 2019 in the same area. The Pentagon confirms these are images of objects it can't identify. Lieutenant Graves told us pilots training off the Atlantic coast see things like that all the time. Every day. Every day for at least a couple of years. Um, wait, wait a minute, every day for a couple of years? Mm -hmm. 
you know, I don't see an exhaust plume. Including this one, off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida in 2015, captured on a targeting camera by members of Graves' squadron. Well, there's a Look at that thing. It's rotating. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. You can sort of hear the surprise in their voices. You certainly can. They seem to have broke character a bit. Uh, and we're just kind of amazed at what they were seeing. What do you think when you see something like this? This is a difficult one to explain. You have rotation. You have high altitudes. You have propulsion, right? I don't know. I don't know what it is, frankly. He told us pilots speculate they are one of three things. Secret U.S. technology, an adversary spy vehicle, or something otherworldly. I would say, you know, the highest probability is it's a threat observation program. Could it be Russian or Chinese technology? I don't see why not. Are you alarmed? I, I am worried, uh, frankly. You know, if these were tactical jets from another country that were hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. But because it looks slightly different, we're not willing to actually look at the problem in the face. Uh, we're, we're happy to just ignore the fact that these are out there watching us every day. The government has ignored it, at least publicly, since closing its Project Blue Book investigation in 1969. But that began to change after an incident off Southern California in 2004, which was documented by radar, by camera, and four naval aviators. We spoke to two of them, David Fravor, a graduate of the Top Gun Naval Flight School and commander of the F-18 squadron on the USS Nimitz, and flying at his wing, Lieutenant Alex Dietrich, who has never spoken publicly about the encounter. I never wanted to be on national TV, <laughs> no offense. So why are you doing this? Because I was in a government aircraft, because I was on the clock, and so I feel a responsibility to, to share what I can, and it is unclassified. It was November 2004, and the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group was training about 100 miles southwest of San Diego. For a week, the advanced new radar on a nearby ship, the USS Princeton, had detected what operators called multiple anomalous aerial vehicles over the horizon, descending 80,000 feet in less than a second. On November 14th, Fravor and Dietrich, each with a weapons system officer in the back seat, were diverted to investigate. They found an area of roiling white water the size of a 737 in an otherwise calm blue sea. So as we're looking at this, her backseater says, hey, Skipper, do you? And about that got out, I said, dude, do you, do you see that thing down there? And we saw this little white tic-tac looking object. And it's just kind of moving above the white water area. As Dietrich circled above, Fravor went in for a closer look. So you're sort of spiraling down? Yep. The Tic Tac still point north-south, it goes and just turns abruptly and starts mirroring me. So as I'm coming down, it starts coming up. So it's, it's mimicking your moves. Yeah, it was aware we were there. He said it was about the size of his F-18, with no markings, no wings, no exhaust plumes. I want to see how close I can get. So I go like this, and it's climbing still. And when it gets right in front of me, it just disappears. Disappears? Disappears like gone. It had sped off. What are you thinking? So your, your mind tries to make sense of it. I'm going to categorize this as maybe a helicopter or <laughs> maybe a drone. And when it disappeared, I mean, it was just. Did your backseaters see this too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was four of us in the airplanes literally watching this thing for roughly about five minutes. Seconds later, the Princeton reacquired the target 60 miles away. Another crew managed to briefly lock onto it with a targeting camera before it zipped off again. You know, I think that over beers, we've sort of said, hey man, if I saw this solo, I don't know that I would have come back and said anything because it sounds so crazy when I say it. You understand that reaction? I do. We've had some people tell me, you know, when you say that, you can sound crazy. And what? I'll be honest, I'm not a UFO guy. But from what I hear you guys saying, there's something. Yes. Oh, there's, there's definitely something that, I don't know who's building it, who's got the technology, who's got the brains, but there's, there's something out there that was better than our airplane. The air crew filed reports. Then, like the mysterious flying object, 
the Nimitz encounter disappeared. Nothing was said or done officially for five years until Lou Elizondo came across the story and investigated. We spend millions of dollars in training these, these pilots and they are seeing something that they can't explain. Furthermore, that information is being backed up on electro-optical data, like gun camera footage, and by radar data. Now, to me, that's compelling. Inside the Pentagon, his findings were met with skepticism. ATIP's funding was eliminated in 2012, but Elizondo says he and a handful of others kept the mission alive, until finally, frustrated, he quit the Pentagon in 2017 but not before getting these three videos declassified. And then things took a stranger turn. I tried to help my colleague, Lou Elizondo, elevate the issue in the department and actually get it to the Secretary of Defense. Christopher Mellon served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence for Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush and had access to top secret government programs. So it's not us, that's one thing we know. We know that. I can say that with a very high degree of confidence, in part because of the positions I held in the department, and I know the process. Mellon says he grew concerned nothing was being done about UAPs, so he decided to do something. In 2017, as a private citizen, he surreptitiously acquired the three Navy videos Elizondo had declassified and leaked them to the New York Times. It's bizarre and unfortunate that Someone like myself has to do something like that to get a national security issue like this on the agenda. He joined forces with now civilian Lou Elizondo, and they started to tell their story to anybody who would listen, to newspapers, the History Channel, to members of Congress. We knew and understood that you had to go to the public, get the public interested to get Congress interested, to then circle back to the Defense Department and get them to start taking a look at it. And now it is. This past August, the Pentagon resurrected ATIP. It's now called the UAP Task Force. Service members now are encouraged to report strange encounters, and the Senate wants answers. Anything that enters an airspace that's not supposed to be there is a threat. After receiving classified briefings on UAPs, Senator Marco Rubio called for a detailed analysis. This past December, while he was still head of the Intelligence Committee, he asked the Director of National Intelligence and the Pentagon to present Congress an unclassified report by next month. This is a bizarre issue. The Pentagon and other branches of the military have a long history of sort of dismissing this. What makes you think that this time is going to be different? I mean, we're going to find out when we get that report. You know, there's a stigma on Capitol Hill. I mean, some of my colleagues are very interested in this topic and some kind of, you know, giggle. When you, when you bring it up. But I, I don't think we can allow the stigma to keep us from having an answer to a very fundamental question. What do you want us to do about this? I want us to take it seriously and have a process to take it seriously. I want us to have a process to analyze the data every time it comes in, that there be a place where this is cataloged and constantly analyzed until we get some answers. Maybe it has a very simple answer. Um, maybe it doesn't. For more on the Nimitz encounter, I felt the vulnerability of not having anything to defend ourselves. Go to 60MinutesOvertime.com. Sponsored by Cologuard.